Dragon. So today is called scar tissue. Do you carry any scar tissue? Of course you do, right? Because do you know about it? So whether it be from a fall on your bike or trauma of divorce, there's some more scar tissue, abandonment like myself or something or someone happening to you. Trauma in general leaves scars. And we're, we always play this game with the past. Trauma leaves scars and we carry scar tissue. And that reminds us scar tissue is what it is that reminds us of the trauma. So I woke up realizing today that we have the ability to create our own perspectives of what scars and scar tissue represent. This is the idea. Imagine a scar you acquired from saving a woman. This is just the idea. A woman in distress um, from a knife-wielding maniac. So you see that happening and you go in there and you get a scar. That scar would represent a notch on your victory wall. So there's an interesting idea, like maybe scars are not so bad, right? Today, we are talking about something that is probably in the next couple of weeks getting tattooed on Dragon's arm. And it is the words, or are the words, amor fati. A-M-O-R-F-A-T-I is a Latin phrase, and it's how I live my life. And it translates to love of fate or love of one's fate, are you in love with your fate? I am in love with my fate. And you know what? I don't even know what my fate is, but I'm in love with it. It's a philosophy that advocates accepting and embracing one's life, including its successes and its failures. The idea is to see every experience in life as an opportunity for growth and to find meaning and purpose in everything that happens to us today is called circumstantial consciousness. Let's think about what that means first. Circumstantial consciousness refers to the degree in which we can practice present time consciousness and make effective decisions in different circumstances. This is a big one, man. This is happening all the time. It's happening right now. There's a lot of other things going on in your life right now that you're either conscious of or not. For example, if you were to be walking down a street, a busy street, circumstantial consciousness would allow you, it would, it would equip, equip and empower you to become aware of all the things like traffic, people walking, and weather and various smells while you're on your way towards something else. So what's interesting to me about this concept is how our circumstances affect our consciousness. Have you ever been in a state of consciousness where you're, you're laser focused, you're on target for something, but then circumstances arise and you become aware of them, circumstantial consciousness, but then they distract you from what it was that you were doing before. So that's why I want you to become aware of this. Let's get into past creation. Ever notice that the time that you refer to as the past, you tell stories about your past, was also at one time unknown. So you look back at your past at the time that it was created, it was known as present. And there was another time where it was identified as future. It's interesting to look at times in your life and recognize what's actually happening with those times. So I said present and future before it became the past. So the first thing I looked at is I realized that when those events that I call my past happened, they went through different phases before they became the past. It's interesting. Fascinating to recognize that the actions that I'm taking right now, that we're taking right now, might represent the present, right? Right now I'm speaking to you in the present. That's what it was perceived as, but it's going to be known as the past seconds after it's done. Grounding, also called earthing. It's a therapeutic technique that involves doing activities that ground or electrically reconnect you to the earth. Man, this is going to shock you. But this practice relies on earthing science. Did you know that there's a science called earthing and grounding physics to explain how electrical charges from the earth can have positive effects on your body? Now, one of my favorite movies was Avatar. I love it because it just reminds you that there's this whole nervous system and 
probably the most advanced technology ever created. And here we are trying to like make phones smaller and AI and all that. What about Earth? By far the most advanced technology. Why aren't we connecting with it? We're separating from it. It gives a new definition to the question of whether or not you're grounded. So that's my question to you today that can kind of give you a little bit of a thought. Are you grounded? So we have to understand what grounding means.